Human heart anatomy observes the heart divided into two distinct and separated partitions, a deoxygenated or low oxygen partition and an oxygenated partition. There are some human... Yes. So the main reason they show you... Yeah, one thing I wanted to add here. I might pause the video in between just to explain little things, right? One thing I wanted to tell you here is uh, in our body, the blood does not, you know, then there are no two different colors for oxygenated and deoxygenated, right? Uh, it's all red only. Only thing is deoxygenated blood is a little lighter shade of red, whereas oxygenated is a darker shade of red, right? But you will not, if you, you know, prick a vein or something, you're not going to get blue blood. That's, that's all I wanted to get it clarified, right? You're not going to get blue blood. The only reason it is shown as blue in most of the diagrams is for our understanding. Because when we are learning anatomy or when we are learning different structures or learning about veins, etc., just so that we are clear that blue stands for deoxygenated, uh, that convention has been made. Or there is a you know, distinction between the two. If everything was red, then understanding the difference between the two gets complicated right okay coming back to our video in congenital heart conditions that can result in this oxygenated and deoxygenated blood mixing however more on that at the end arteries carry blood away from the heart think a for away arteries are typically oxygen rich but there are exceptions veins generally carry blood to the heart veins typically are oxygen poor but there are exceptions Capillaries are small blood vessels, and it is at the capillary level where oxygen is delivered to organs and tissues and where carbon dioxide will be picked up to travel back to the lungs. So looking at this heart, the right side, and that's the person's right, so for you it will look opposite, pumps deoxygenated blood, and the left side pumps oxygenated blood. We can also see four chambers, the right atrium and right ventricle and the left atrium and the left ventricle. I like to remember that A comes before V in the alphabet, so that helps me remember that A's for atria are at the top of the heart, V for ventricles are at the bottom of the heart. Atria also have thinner walls than the thicker walled ventricles. The heart also contains valves, which we'll see when we get to tracing the pathway of blood. The valves are one-way structures that help separate the chambers and also prevent backflow of blood. Ready to take the adventure of a lifetime? An adventure tracing the pathway of blood through the heart? We're going to start with blood that is in a human toe. The heart so that it can be pumped. Right, so now they're going to show you a complete pathway, okay? Just, uh, I would, instead of focusing on whatever pathway they are writing, just focus on how the blood is moving, okay, through the heart. The pathway and everything, I have it in our PPT, so I'll, I will give it to you in note form. But just focus on how the blood is flowing in the heart okay that is important here don't focus on the pathway which is written okay and then be spread throughout the body it's going to get there through the vena cava inferior vena cava to be specific as the superior vena cava is above the heart the blood enters the right atrium the right atrium contracts pushing the blood through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle the right ventricle contracts pumping the blood through the pulmonary valve to the pulmonary artery by the way when you see the word pulmonary it likely involves lungs. The pulmonary artery takes blood to the lungs. The lungs are where red blood cells in the blood will take on oxygen and release carbon dioxide. Now this blood is oxygenated. It needs to return to the heart so that the heart can pump it throughout the body. The oxygenated blood travels through a pulmonary vein to the left atrium. The left atrium contracts and the blood travels through the mitral valve, also known as the bicuspid valve, into the left ventricle. The left ventricle contracts and pumps the blood through the aortic valve and out a major artery known as the aorta. The aorta is a major artery that carries oxygen. Right, so I want to pause here and just show it to you once again. So this is, yeah, just ignore all the things that are written here. Okay. Uh, yeah, main thing I wanted you to understand is the flow of blood. So what happens is, this is, this one is an entire single blood vessel. You can consider it like that. Why is it divided into two parts is because uh, this region, no, it brings in the blood from the top of your body, basically your shoulders, chest, head, neck, etc. From top of the body, the blood comes from here and from the rest of your body, okay, which is the uh, below part, all the parts below the heart, the blood enters through this part, okay. So this is what is called as our vena cava or vena cava, however you pronounce it. Okay, okay. 
So blood enters here. This is our first step. I'll draw it in uh, yellow. Blood enters the atrium. Okay, and then from here it is pumped into the ventricle. From here it is pumped into this vessel, which is known as the pulmonary artery. From here it goes to the lungs. Okay. And from the lungs, it comes back into this atrium. Okay. And it comes to the ventricles. And from the ventricles, it is pumped into this biggest artery, which then sends it to all parts of the body, which is known as the aorta. Okay. So I just wanted you to understand the flow of blood from this uh, video, like how it comes and goes, uh, what parts you need to know, etc. What all, how does it travel, etc. Everything I will tell you once we come back to our PPT. Okay, so main thing is blood, deoxygenated blood will come from all the organs. It will enter the heart, right? And then that blood is pumped to the lungs. In the lungs, it will pick up oxygen and it will come back to the heart. And then it will be pumped to all the parts of your body, right? Okay. Oxygenated blood throughout the body. Heart yes. needs its own blood supply. Yes, Mike, you had a question? Yeah, uh... If, like, if there was a case where a human did not have a heart, huh. then would we still be able to survive? Uh, okay, difficult to answer. Uh, if, it is, if it is after, means uh, if there's a condition when you know you have to take out your heart because it is not functioning properly or you know it is only functioning up to 5%, something like that, yes, the human would survive wherein you would put in another heart. But if you are telling me if there's a condition where we were born without a heart itself, then no, we would not survive. It won't be possible. So it's like necessary for that the blood to get that much pressure and move across the body. Otherwise, we can't survive. Yes, yes. Very, very necessary. Very necessary. Yes, Dakshini has mentioned, right? There is something called a bypass machine. So that depends on how much part of your uh, heart is uh, not functioning or is functioning properly. So based on that, you know, you might have even heard the term pacemaker. Some people have a pacemaker. Hopefully not many people in our uh, country or, you know, in our surroundings will have it. But yeah, some people have something called as a pacemaker in their heart, an artificial pacemaker. This is the one which gives the electric signal to ensure that the heart keeps beating. Okay. Another thing is a bypass machine. Uh, that is usually done when you are in the process of getting another heart or basically a heart transplant. In between that, if you are not functioning, your heart is not functioning well, but uh, you need something to you know help you through with it, then you can use that. But this is this is in the case then your heart is in your body, but everything will be connected to that machine. So you need your heart in its place, functioning or not. If it's not there, automatically you are are dead you won't survive right okay so based on there are a lot of things now uh, earlier uh, heart surgeries were considered very uh, scary and uh, you know uh, i would say something very frightening only yeah that's the correct word but now as times have passed a lot of discoveries and a lot of uh, you know insight has been gained from the medical and anatomical perspective because of that, now they have found ways to, you know, repair and regenerate hearts, uh, you know, even when you are um, alive itself or, you know, how to re reboot your system, etc. There are a lot of things that they can do now. So it's not that scary as it used to be. Okay. Right. The heart can receive this blood supply through coronary arteries. Coronary arteries branch off the aorta and eventually deliver blood into capillaries. These capillaries deliver oxygen and glucose to the heart. Coronary veins will take the deoxygenated blood to the right atrium where the blood will eventually travel the pathway to become oxygenated. In fact, to quiz yourself, can you pause the video and trace the pathway of blood again, starting with the right atrium? Cuspid valve, right ventricle, Pulmonary my does not want to sit. Okay, right. Okay, let me take you back to my uh, PPT. There's just one more point which says that okay, heart beats uh, continuously, and you need it to uh, beat properly in order to survive. Right? It has over uh, one lakh beats per day, something like that. That's it. The rest of it is back to our. Okay. Right. So this is a simple diagram of the heart, okay? And these are the things you need to know. I'm writing it here. You can also take it down. 
first thing you need to know are the chambers of the heart correct so there are four chambers uh, namely you have the right atrium correct left atrium you have right ventricle and left ventricle okay uh, these two together which means the atrium together are usually the plural word for that is called atria okay so if you read the word atria anywhere don't get confused they are referring to the atriums together okay and for ventricle it is the plural form is just add an s there's no other word for it okay but yeah if you just if you come across this word uh, don't get confused as to is it another part or something it is just they are talking of both the atriums together so they call it atria okay right so we have our four four chambers here right this is what you need to know in any order the order does not matter you can call 1 2 3 4 you can start labeling anywhere uh the start numbering anywhere but yeah labeling correctly so this is uh, now you would have got an idea after seeing the video right this is when you are looking at it it is opposite to you but this is from the person's perspective right that's why even though this is my right i am calling it left atrium got it okay so these this this is one thing you need to know second thing you need to know is what are valves or basically what is the function or the purpose of valves okay their main function is to prevent back flow of blood okay so wherever you see the word valve in the human body there are many valves okay not just in the heart uh, you could consider epiglottis or the you know the flap near your esophagus also to be a kind of a valve only that's to prevent a uh, back flow etc okay so why do we need a valve is mainly because what happens is the blood which is pumped in from the okay blue blue got mixed up ha huh? blood which is pumped in from the atrium into the right ventricle you don't want it to go back into the atrium right same thing when it is pumped from the ventricle to this blood vessel okay or from this ventricle to this blood vessel you don't really want it to come back into the ventricle okay because of that reason you have valves so these flap like structures you see them they are called valves the number of flaps or the number of you know these kind of structures in a valve can vary but all you need to remember is this the names of the valves are not really important right don't need to remember all this which is which etc okay yeah that's one two and another thing you need to know would be the four important uh blood vessels the four major blood vessels which are entering and leaving the heart so once you have uh, just taken these two things down let me know i'll write it here in the chambers part then right you must have written the chambers of the heart completed that right yes ma'am yes others yes, others yeah. others yes okay done ma'am yes, done okay oh i erase everything okay. right and next thing i wanted you i want you to take down would be the four major blood vessels of the heart okay i won't say of the heart i would just say uh, coming or exiting the heart because they are not of the heart they are okay four major blood vessels which you need to know let's just not write anything next to it yeah this is one group one group is uh, you need to know about vena cava which i showed you in the video also and aorta okay vena cava is the largest vein you could say it is the main vein okay 
which is bringing deoxygenated blood from all parts of the body like i said this is also the vena cava this is also the vena cava this brings blood from all the top regions up till your shoulder or your chest region and this brings the blood from the rest of the body okay so you can write it there next to vena cava that uh, what was i going to write brings deoxygenated blood from all organs to the heart right and aorta is your main okay, i'm writing it here main artery and what does the aorta do it sends oxygenated blood to all parts of the body okay like in the video you can remember what they were saying so a would be for away right all the arteries and aorta both send the blood away right okay and veins would be for you know bringing it back so vena cava is our main vein and it brings it back the reasons that i prefer a systems approach is first that it, it isn't a linear approach looking for simple cause and simple effects because in, in this, almost all okay, walks of human endeavor different. things are never that simple second uh, it drives you to think relationally about the problem in other words not to think about ice you think about organizations and individuals and in the dynamics wow okay my system is actually given up today <laughs> i have no idea changing it's not okay. static um, where is it okay. Just give me one second. That audio is still playing. Right. Sorry. I don't know from where, which tab, what audio started playing. I have no idea. Okay. Coming back to yes. Ha. Huh. So I was telling you that uh, veins or vena cava would ideally send blood, and aorta, arteries, everything they. Uh, no, no, no. V veins and vena cava. I'm so sorry. They bring blood, right? Aorta arteries, or when you say A, you can say away, and they would be sending the oxygenated blood, right? So yeah, in yesterday's class and in today's class, we heard that there are exceptions, right? That not all arteries send oxygenated blood, and not all veins carry deoxygenated blood. So we will be learning about the two exceptions today, which are these groups. uh this is our group okay all colors are taken okay let's take orange which is basically or namely the pulmonary artery and the pulmonary vein right so this becomes another group why do i call it the group is because again what they mentioned in the video pulmonary refers to the lungs so both these blood vessels have something to do with the lungs they either send the blood to the lungs or they bring it back from the lungs right and why do we say that they are exceptions is because pulmonary artery is the only artery which sends deoxygenated blood to the lung so i'm writing it here it sends deoxygenated blood to the lungs okay and pulmonary vein is the only vein which brings it brings oxygenated blood from the lungs to the heart of course right okay so that's why i have uh, you know separated these two because these are for the body the first two are for uh, you know all the organs or all the cells in the body versus these two are for the lungs specifically they don't go uh, they are not sending or they are not bringing anything from the body okay and these the, these two are very important right you can put a star mark next to them 
because they ask you mcq questions like uh, you know name the artery which carries deoxygenated blood so you must know that it is the pulmonary artery okay it is the only artery which carries deoxygenated blood right similarly pulmonary vein is the only vein which carries oxygenated blood okay right so these are the basic things you need to know about the heart and the basic diagram usually uh then it's not frequently asked to draw but labeling and knowing the basic things are important if you know the basic diagram to draw as well that that would be great right it's i'm not sure if they decide to ask suddenly yeah so but these these basic uh, details which i just mentioned they, that all you must know for sure which is the main artery which are the four blood vessels which are the chambers of the heart what are the valves what are its functions what are valves and what are its functions not the names okay okay have you taken this down can i go ahead oh today nobody switched on their camera sad can't see any of you <laughs> good good ठीक है आई हैव अ क्वेश्चन हां टेल मी सो दिस आयोटा इट्स आल्सो आर्टरी राइट इट्स द मेन आर्टरी राइट यस यस एयोटा इज द मेन आर्टरी करेक्ट ओके right you've taken it down can i go ahead yes ma'am ma'am i have a doubt ha tell me ma'am so vena cava is a vein right so it's a main yes. vein yes 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 vena cava is you can say main vein or you can just call it a vein yes anything this is the vein this is the main artery these these two are our only exceptions okay these two are our only exceptions where the function of artery and vein is reversed okay right next we come to what is double circulation theek okay? hai to before we come or before you try to take this down or understand what is double circulation i just want to connect the dots for you right till now whatever we've learned no we are just going to connect it together and finally understand how or why double circulation came into being or why are we calling it double circulation theek hai let us leave out nutrition or let us leave out digestion part of it we'll talk about respiration and we'll talk about the circulatory system theek hai those two connects okay we already know that heart and organs right heart and organs are connected how are they connected is mainly the blood from the organs is sent to the heart the oxygenated blood right and the heart then pumps in oxygenated blood back to the organs basically it just adds o2 and sends it back to the organs correct this is what we learned today previous class or during respiration we also learned something else which was about lungs that uh okay let me use another color right this is what is breathing isn't it uh we take in o2 and we give out co2 correct this is what is happening in the lungs correct now every time when we uh, talk about circulation or whenever we spoke about even blood or when i discussed heart organs etc or even in last class when i was telling about blood and blood vessels i kept saying oxygenated blood correct isn't it even now we are saying right aorta is sending oxygenated blood so from where is this heart getting that oxygen okay now you connect the two that last class we learned that oxygen is reaching the alveoli correct yes shrijak i may have a doubt so how does blood get deoxygenated deoxygenated ha huh, correct i am answering the uh, i am coming to that only that how it would get oxygenated and how it would get deoxygenated also both both i'll answer both yes okay yes mike Ma'am, can I answer the question? Yes, yes, you can. Go ahead. So we 
I think I think we looked at pulmonary artery and pulmonary vein. So the uh, oxygenated blood goes from the lungs to the heart, and then it pumps all across. And then the deoxygenated blood comes back to the uh, heart and then goes to the lungs to get oxygenated. Excellent, excellent. Yes. So you grasped what I was trying to say. Very good. Right. Yes. So that's exactly what happens, right? So when I'm saying that the blood is getting oxygenated, okay? Or if you take your question, what what Shrija asked, right? How is it getting deoxygenated? Where is it losing oxygen and where is it getting oxygen? But you already know that in respiration, the lungs or basically the alveoli, right? At the alveoli, the exchange is happening, correct? In the lungs at the alveoli, this ga gaseous exchange is happening there, right? So there must be some way where this blood is going to the heart, correct? And it is going to come back from the heart, back to the lungs, right? There has to be another channel like this. Because we learned that alveoli is, uh, is the site for gas exchange. So the blood cells, they take up the oxygen here only and they give off their carbon dioxide here itself. So which means we know that there is nothing to do with the heart. The same process is not going to be repeated at the heart, right? So what we do is we basically build another channel where the blood from the heart will go to the lungs, right? And this is where, this is where or you could say this uh, region is the region next to the alveoli which is going to pick up the oxygen, which is going to give off the CO2 and come back to the heart, right? So this region, which is going from the heart to the lungs is going to pick up oxygen and come back and it's going to give out CO2 as well, okay, right? So this, because you are going to mix up the two, right? Okay, okay. To answer Srijak's question, how the blood got deoxygenated is, this oxygen travels all to parts to your organs and cells to, of your body, correct? This oxygenated blood will travel to each and every cell in your body and it will give off that oxygen there. For what? Why do you think the cell will need oxygen for? For energy production. Excellent, right? For respiration or you could say for energy production, anything. Correct. So once the cell takes up this oxygen, right? So the red blood cell will give it to the organs or will give it to the cells wherever it is depositing this O2 and it's going to go back empty back to the heart, right? So that it will pick up oxygen again and it will take it up again. So, right. So this procedure is what happens and this is how. And so the alveoli, so from the lungs, the, the oxygen get, comes to the heart. So then it passes through all the organs and it gets repeated and then from the heart, it goes to the lungs and it becomes oxygenated. Yes, excellent. Yes, that's exactly what happens. Okay, right. So now if you see, this is one cycle which is happening, correct? One cycle where blood from the organs is going to the heart and from the heart, it is being pumped back to the organs, correct? And this is the second cycle which is happening. Isn't it? Where the blood from the heart is going to the lungs and it's coming back to the heart. Okay, now because there are two cycles which are happening, it is called double circulation. Right, it's easy to understand now, isn't it? Once you've connected everything together, now you have answered all your questions. That's why we went in that flow. That's why we first understood uh, why we are taking in food. Then we understood how we are taking in oxygen. We understood why we need that oxygen plus food, how we are breaking it down. And now we are studying how that oxygen is reaching to all the parts. Correct? Right. So now this, if you understand this, then you have understood the concept of double circulation. This is exactly it. Just because the blood travels twice through the heart, right? It is traveling twice, no? Once it's coming from the organs and once it is coming back from the lungs. Twice it is coming to the heart and twice it is leaving the heart. That's why it is called double circulation. Okay, right. Uh, the same thing, whatever I've written here, uh, I have put it in the form, you know, proper format in the previous slide and given you proper points, etc., which you can write when they ask. Yes. So please take down this flowchart. This is very, very important. When they ask you to draw a flowchart for double circulation, you can just make this as it is, right? And this is the uh, information or if you need information for short notes, you can use this points. Right. 
uh, here if you are finding it difficult to draw all these things inside this box you can make it like this also we will do okay write r a l a r v and l v okay this will also do yeah one thing you can always remember is the atrium will always be collecting blood okay atrium or atria they will always be collecting blood they don't give it okay they collect ventricles give right so you will remember the direction of arrows also na that will help you ventricle will always be giving blood see this side this side it is giving where the atrium will always be taking in from wherever it is coming it is just taking it in remember that yeah the other things so we already know right pulmonary artery is carrying the oxygenated blood to the lungs oxygenated blood everything else i just explained so yeah that's that in the diagram Mom, what is V one, V two? Ah, uh, that is just stating valves, valve one and valve two. Yeah, you can you can ignore that. Chalega. These numberings are also just for you to remember that you have, you have included all these parts or not. It's not playing an important role. done have you taken it down um i'll just two minutes two minutes
Dan One minute, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Done, ma'am. Done? Okay. No, yeah, this flowchart is important. That's why I was waiting that you take it down. Okay. Right. Yes. Now, some points about what is blood pressure, right? Here, you can take down uh, first point, second point. I'm going to show back one second. Yes, I yes. think I missed one point. Yes. Just give me one second now. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yes, so some points on what is blood pressure and the instrument, etc. Uh, generally, they don't ask you a question like what is blood pressure? Uh, they only ask you this point. This point is the most important point here. Uh, the instrument which is measured with. You can take down these two also for your information that will be good uh, point three and point five these two points i will come back to it when we you know when probably we revise the chapter when you are a little bit uh you have got the hang of the chapter and you understand the different words that time i'll tell you a little bit more about cardiac cycle etc and those kind of things <clears throat> for now uh the first point just basically tells you the definition right and it also tells you that it is much greater in arteries than veins. And the third thing you must know is the instrument name and spelling. Uh, be careful and copy the correct spelling. Okay. It's called Figmo Manometer. Right. So this is how it looks. There's one big flap. I'm not sure uh, you might have seen it or not. Right. Hopefully you might not have. Right, usually they check the blood pressure for uh, people, you know, middle-aged or old people in general, right? Because that's when your heart starts getting weak and you probably might have heart issues as well. So checking the blood pressure and ensuring that everything is okay is, uh, you know, it becomes a part of your general checkup. Now they maximum they take your, you know, they might take your pulse or they'll check your temperature, things like that. They don't really see your blood pressure unless you... Uh, complain of dizziness frequently right right so there's this flap kind of thing which they'll tie around your arm above the elbow right uh, they'll tie it up there and then there's this balloon like thing which is there which is used to tighten it around your arm so they make it very very tight and then there is like they have a box kind of thing and a mercury scale they'll see how far the mercury has gone up and once they stop, you know, once they know it is tight enough, they release this slowly and uh, the mercury will stop at one place and then it will fall a little bit and then it will fall completely. So they mark these two readings and that's how they get your BP. This is just I'm telling you, like this is how it is measured. You don't need to know exact steps and all. But this entire apparatus of, you know, that a flap which they... Uh, you know, which is going to attach to your arm, the balloon-like thing, which they are going to inflate, and the scale, all three together form your sphygmomanometer. Okay. Usually, if you would have seen in uh, somebody's medical reports, you know, if you would have got a chance to see some of your family members' medical reports, etc., you would see you get two values when you read the blood pressure, something like this. 
right? And then let's see. So this is how they read it, and how you get those two values, etc., is given in this point, right? So this is why I just skipped it for now. Why you get two values? How you get those two values, etc. Yes, Mac. Or uh, they have blood pressure medicines I've seen it all state. How does that help with the BP? Oh, so basically what happens now, they are nothing but blood thinners. So they'll thin out the blood instead of it being very thick, no? So blood pressure is basically it, your heart needs to put in a lot of extra effort to pump the blood. Maybe because somewhere the artery is clogged or maybe because it has become thin. It could be any reason. For any reason, if you are putting extra pressure, which means you have high BP. That's what it loosely translates to. So now what these medicines do, no? they'll thin out your blood. They're called blood thinners. This is for if you have high BP. Huh? If you have low BP, it will make it worse. They're usually a type of blood thinners where they will ensure that, you know, these blood cells are become smaller or, you know, it has become more liquidy, more fluid structure. So it can pass through whatever small place it is. And there will be something to remove this blockage also. If there is some blockage somewhere, something is, some cells have got stuck together or something has deposited here, there will be some kind of substance to clear that out as well. That's how it will help. Ma'am. Yes, Srija. I have a doubt. What is a vessel? What is a vessel? I didn't get you vessel or ventricle. In the first point, what's a vessel? Oh, what a vessel. Okay, so we spoke about blood vessels, right? Yes, I got it. Ah, artery, veins, and capillaries. These are the blood vessels. These are the vessels we are talking of. Okay, right. Okay, have you taken down the points? Can I go ahead? Um, we have only the three points only, right? Yes, yes, only the three points. This is just yes, extra information that you know what happens if there is high BP, then you have something which is called as hypertension. And how it happens, what I just explained, you know, my cast, right? What happens if when they take uh, BP medicine, etc. So that all only is explained here. So this once you understand how blood pumps through the heart or, you know, uh, what am I saying? How heart pumps the blood or how, uh, you know, the blood flows, etc. Once you get a little bit grasp of the chapter, then I'll come back and I'll tell you extra things. Okay. Okay. Done, done. Take care. Right. Yeah. So we did all this last class. We did blood. We did blood vessels. We did lymph. Also, we finished all this, right? So, we are now going to go to transportation in plants, right? So, what happens in plants basically is you have two tissues which you had studied, correct? You had studied in uh, class ninth, isn't it? Among the many tissues you had studied, there were two permanent tissues, which was okay. One second. What happened to this? Just one second, there's some pop up on my screen. Yeah. Yes. So among the many tissues you studied, you studied two permanent tissues, which were xylem and phloem. So here we are going to look at how the transport happens in xylem and phloem. So basically, if you remember, yeah, you can take these two points down. Uh, the first point is not important. It just explains, right? You can take these two down. The transport of water and minerals is done via the xylem and transport of food and other substances is done via the phloem. That's all is important here, right? 
so in class 9th we we learned about the structures and you know we spoke about how uh, does it have a, a thick cell wall or thin cell wall does it have perforations how does it look like what are the different uh, components of xylem and phloem right xylem had uh, four components i cannot place them right now yeah phloem had also four components phloem uh, companion cells etc right so those kind of things we saw the structure everything properly in class 9 but now we are going to see how exactly they help the plant or how exactly the transportation happens this also in just brief not in high detail that you know okay this compound will get stuck here or you know this reaction will happen and then it will move etc not all that just basics how it will get transported okay right so first we look at transport of water okay so you can write these three points this is important this is basically what happens in the xylem in case you want to know uh, the tissue involved right so in plants usually what happens is if suppose this is your plant yes parvati uh, now can i go back to the last slide one minute i want to check something uh, what was the function of the phloem phloem is for food and other substances okay here done yes ma'am okay right so this is xylem and uh, yeah i was telling you what exactly happens in the plant right okay you know what take this down then i'll explain it to you this is all new right so i don't want you to multitask you take it down then i'll explain it Then can I explain the points? Uh, yes, yes ma'am. Ma Great. Okay. Okay. Ha. Huh, yes, the xylem, tracheids, and vessels. I couldn't remember the component names. So I don't want to give you all wrong names. Yeah, we also had uh, sieve tubes, right, and companion cells, something like that. Okay. Right. Okay. yes so coming back to what happens in plants is basically if this is something if this is something like your plant 
water is usually absorbed by the roots okay think uh, great okay water is usually absorbed by roots by the process called osmosis okay yesterday when we did our definition of diffusion we also spoke about osmosis right uh, it's basically the movement of water molecules from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration via a semi permeable membrane correct the keywords here is semi permeable membrane and movement of only water molecules okay so in case yeah in case if you need a recap or you you know you forgotten what osmosis is that you can take it down otherwise not required so by osmosis water molecules they enter the root hairs and root cells okay so even if you are watering the plant you know let's say you are watering the leaf or you put water to the stem etc it does not really take up water like that it always takes up water from the root cells okay so once this water enters the root it uh, travels all the way or you know it will travel all the way up via the xylem and it will reach the tip of the plants which is basically the leaves or the flowers etc let's consider the tip of the plant to be the leaf only right so now once it reaches the leaf uh, what is going to happen is a process which is known as transpiration so there are stomata in the leaf right are we saw stomato yes tomato yesterday also right i almost said zomato <laughs> okay okay tomato right maybe i am hungry that i'm saying i'm looking at stomata and thinking zomato <laughs> okay um uh, yeah so this these are the pores you know which are present on the underside of the leaf uh, the stomata so what happens is like i said when we discussed uh, respiration in plants right that some amount of oxygen or carbon dioxide when it is released from the stomata some amount of water vapor is also released out so that is what is called transpiration which is there again the definition is there in the next slide i'll come back to it but i just wanted to explain what exactly happens here itself okay so water is lost again via diffusion and via uh, you know difference in concentration from the leaf as well okay i'm erasing this okay so let's take a blue color here and let's put that okay so water is lost from here it's taken up here from here okay now already you would have observed something right that the movement of water molecules is against the direction of gravity isn't it which means it is going to require some kind of energy or some kind of help to pull it upwards and that help or that kind of energy or that process which pulls it upwards is what is called as the transpiration pull so it is a very simple process again if you understand diffusion and osmosis you will understand what happens here take for example your leaf again i'm drawing it here okay right now there is high concentration of water in the leaf okay and there is low concentration of water outside right so when i say this then of course the water molecule is going to move outside correct it's going to move out of the leaf and into the atmosphere okay now what happens is in the leaf in the leaf once the water has moved out second situation which is in the leaf the water concentration has become low right because whatever water molecules were there they were given out so now the water concentration in the leaf is low so since we don't have or stomata is not having the function take take in water so the water comes only from the roots so because there is a low concentration in the leaf this transpiration pull ensures that the water moves upward and reaches the leaves okay so again your concentration will become high in the leaf okay and again water will be given out so this process keeps happening over and over again it's only because of this pull or because of this change in the concentration gradient there is a pull which is created which pushes this water molecules up to the leaf right okay now you might have a question if you know if the water molecule or you know if the plant is going to keep losing water like this what is the point of sending it to up to the leaf or why is this process happening continuously isn't it if i'm telling you that all the water which is taken up etc which is then given out 
eventually you will have this question that why is it happening in the first place so for that you need to understand a something or a concept or a word which is known as equilibrium okay equilibrium in simple language basically refers to same either you are trying to maintain same concentration you are trying to maintain same conditions same pressure anything it can be right when you are trying to maintain same conditions it is called equilibrium so here also the plant and the atmosphere are trying to maintain equilibrium regarding the water concentration they are trying to maintain it the same that is why if it is high one place it is coming out here and then you are balancing it right so only because of this reason in order to maintain the same concentration all this is happening and thanks to that you have something which is called a transpiration pull which is generated which is making sure that water is moving from uh, the root to the tip of the leaves or to everywhere all parts of the plant basically right okay this exact same thing is explained in this diagram here right so the roots play an important role in taking up the water then why a xylem ignore the question addition words not required for you right in the xylem the water molecules you know they travel through this tube called xylem and then finally they reach the leaf where once you know excess water or you know once uh, uh, whatever water is required has been taken up and the excess is given out from the stomata is evaporated from the stomata okay right this is in simple words what transpiration pool is and in technical terms it is given here so you can take this down right same thing we show the previous uh, slide ha huh. yeah 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 one second yes did you want the drawing or this no ma'am i wanted to ask what is cohesion and adhesion oh you wanted to ask thank you uh they are a type of chemical reactions okay cohesion basically means sticking together cohesion adhesion refers to sticking together uh if you if you have seen the bottle of fevicol uh you must have seen it is written adhesive on it you've seen that word yes adhesive yes so adhesive or adhesion basically refers to things sticking together okay so the from the roots the water goes up and sticks to the xylem till the leaf yes yes so basically the water molecule they stick to each other so that you know they are they form like a chain kind of thing a water molecule so chain that, uh, it's kind of like preventing the back flow of water like the uh, like the vena cava no 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 that there's no structure preventing back flow of water this is basically the water molecules you no know, if they are isolated like this they will just stick together they form one chain like this and then they'll travel together this is what cohesion and addition means okay okay uh these are actually chemical terms when you study uh, chemistry in detail uh, probably 11 12th or in future after that post that you will come across these words called cohesion and addition right so they are uh, chemical terms not required right now okay yes so this is important this first point is basically the definition of transpiration uh, right transpiration might not be new for you you would have definitely come across it or learnt about it in your previous years but transpiration pull is new for you what is that right so that i explained it to you yes so the loss of water in the form of water vapor you can add water vapor here or simply vapor from the living tissues of aerial parts of the plant aerial usually refers to tips okay tips or topmost part is what is called aerial right it mainly occurs by diffusion through stomata so when stomata opens some amount of water vapor also is released yes mahak what would be the difference between transpiration and perspiration which happens in movement ha huh. so transpiration only happens in plants perspiration is happening in humans that is the difference but the process is the same uh you could say um okay broadly you can say it is the same but in humans we don't have stomata right and plants don't have uh, sweat glands or you know we don't release sweat so perspiration refers to releasing sweat not exactly water 
sweat is a mixture of salts and water right that would be the main difference whereas in plants uh, salts don't usually leach out like this it's just water that would be the main difference between the two remaining things are same purse okay i wrote purse yeah this would be perspiration right so transpiration is uh, yeah loss of water then mainly occurs through stomata like we just said and what is transpiration pull i explained it to you right because of the change in concentration what happens is there is a pulling force kind of thing created think of like you know picking out water from the well something like that you pull it up right same kind of thing happens in the plants also they pull the water from the roots all the way to the leaves and this water travels through the xylem tissue Let me know once you have taken it down. Done. Done. Others done? Done, ma'am. Okay. Okay, let's go ahead. Yes, I'm done. Done. Okay. Right. Next, we need to know how does food move. Here also, I will uh, tell you to take down only a couple of points, not all of them. Yeah, the points. Yeah, the first one and the third one. First one, mainly to understand what is the definition of translocation, right? So whenever you talk about movement of food, it is known as translocation. What are the soluble products of photosynthesis? This is basically the food or, you know, the glucose. You can just consider it as glucose molecules. This is the transport of soluble products of photosynthesis. And it is called translocation. And another point which you need to know is this requires energy. So you can club them together and write as one point. Okay. The other two points. So basically, phloem also transports amino acids, other substances not required to know. Basically, they're just trying to say apart from food, some other uh, salts or some other proteins and things like that are also transferred. That's not required. The last point, no, the last point is explaining how this entire thing happens. So this explanation I will do when we do a revision of the chapter. So that when you are, you know, a little bit better with the chapter, I'll come back to it. This is the same thing like I explained transpiration to you. No, the same thing happens for food. And it is called, instead of transpiration, it is called active transport. So the exact same thing is explained here. Yes, ma'am. Translocation will be with gravity, right? Because it is produced, the food is produced and leaves and then it goes down. Um, yeah, it can be with and without because it is leaves to all other parts of the plant. So if there's suppose there's something up, it will go up also. If it needs to, definitely it will go down to the roots. But yeah, if there is some other part up as well, it will go uh, against the gravity as well. So both. Yeah. 
डन टेक एंड डाउन नो टू पॉइंट राइट या सो दिस कैन सेम थिंग जस्ट एन एक्सप्लेनेशन और यू नो डिफरेंस बिटवीन द टू दिस ऑल्सो आई कम बैक वेन बी डू रिविजन सो the main uh, concept or the main purpose of you know adding xylem phloem here in this chapter was to just connect the dots for you that you had learned the structure of xylem phloem in grade 9 right so to understand how exactly it works or what happens the two were added here so both work by the same principle that is the difference in concentration or a difference in pressure right just a few differences which are there have been highlighted in those points there and in this figure so this when we do revision i'll come back to it so skip it for now no worries okay yes and this brings us to the last part of our chapter or the last life process which is excretion so under excretion you have uh, excretion in humans of course right humans is the main part which is covered in all the uh four life processes which are there right and you have a little bit on let's say some products in plants etc what are the waste products in plants and a little information uh extra information on you know all animals do they secrete urea you know do they excrete urea sorry uh, not secrete it could be excrete do they excrete the same type of toxic waste or not so yeah those kind of basic things but i would say this is the shortest life process uh in the book not in reality in reality all of them are equally complex but to study or uh, in the book this is the shortest one wherein you just have to remember uh two diagrams uh, right and uh, okay two diagrams and a few points on the functions or just uh you know how could i say okay the path of blood or how exactly filtration happens few points on that that's it is there in under excretion right okay so yeah first we'll just see the plants may what all are there so we know right we spoke about oxygen multiple times it is one of the waste products of photosynthesis right everything is important so yeah oxygen will be given out through which part the stomata stomata correct oxygen will be given out through the stomata correct excess water we just learned right transpiration again stomata the term is called transpiration but it given out via stomata right there are also waste products which are stored in cellular vacuoles leaves that fall off and resin and gums and some amount of waste products are released into the soil as well okay coming back to this part again little recap of class 9th cell chapter right this is how your plant cell looks like if you remember we had studied an organelle called vacuole what happened to the color yeah we had studied an organelle called vacuole and we had said that it occupies around 50 to 90% of the cell isn't it so yeah this vacuole is where and when we studied the organelle we also said that it is used for storage storage purposes right so the waste products can be stored in these vacuoles this is what they mean by cellular vacuoles right they can also be stored in leaves that are decaying or dying and are about to fall off right there also and they can be stored in the form of resin and gums what are resin and gums basically if this is your tree right sometimes in some trees not all trees in some trees when you you know cut open or you uh, you know make a slice in the bark you take a knife or any sharp object and just make a thin slice on the bark you will notice some substances flowing out of it some gooey substance which will be flowing out of it those gooey or sticky substances are what are called resin and gums so there are different products either they can be resins or they can be gums uh gums may you have uh, xanthan gums or you know um i'm not getting the other word generally gums only they are called which are used for sticking or you know for industrial uh, 
purpose is any industrial manufacturing things they'll require one important product you get like this is rubber i think you would have heard about it right you get rubber like this rubber trees rubber is collected like this they'll keep a bucket below attached here and all this sticky substance is collected like this then it is taken to the factories and molded or you know a processed into whatever form of rubber you want make it tires make it uh, anything wherever rubbers are used for right so the, these products are resin and gums usually stored in the barks and when you slice them you will get it in the form of you know this this is not to be confused with young plants so young plants if you cut open no some plants if you just pluck their stem you will get some white liquid white oozy liquid sometimes it smells also or sometimes it's just sticky it just sticks in your hand that is not the same as this that is either it is a substance you know which the plant is secre secreting uh to keep predators off or it is uh you know something toxic for the person who's trying to bite it off okay that does not really have much value like this resin and gums become important for us because we use them to make uh you know our products or we use them to eat you know something like maple syrup also maple syrup also you get like this okay from maple trees right yeah so if they ask you a question like what are the useful uh, uh, plant waste products you know which are useful to us plant waste products which are useful to humans your answer should be resin and gums they are the only ones which which we use extensively right okay right done have you taken this slide down okay, go ahead Done, done. Others? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes. Okay. I think you all got exhausted, is it? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, today batch one was also very quiet. You all are also very quiet. I think, yeah, probably studying is becoming too much. is it okay right so excretion in humans you need to uh, don't worry what i'll do is no like i showed i sent the video uh, i sent one video no on the whatsapp group it is this first video only so that time i was not able to play it because of some issue so instead what i'll do is instead of keeping you here since you all are half tired i'll you can watch that video which i sent on the group i'll finish the explanation of this and then we can wrap up class a little bit early right so that you you can also chill for a bit let's do that okay but yeah please wa do watch that video uh, why am i saying that is because the entire process of filtration or you know of everything happening in the nephron is explained beautifully in that video so if you just watch it once also it will be everything will be crystal clear to you that okay this this this, this happens this is all i need to know acha this way it is going to move why reabsorption happens etc everything will be clear it's just 7 or 8 minute long it's not very long also right okay uh coming back to excretion in humans let me do general information first and then come back to dialysis right yes so in humans you need to know a few things one would be the diagram of excretory system theek okay. hai this is basically you know knowing where the kidneys are diagram of the kidneys ureter bladder and urethra right that diagram is there in your cnn textbooks etc right this again you must be doing it uh, you must be aware of it so put it as a secondary focus so don't put it as you know the main thing you must do first the main diagram you first need to learn would be this one this is nothing but the diagram of a 
نفران اوکے این ای پی ایچ آر او این نوٹ ایچ این ای پی ایچ آر او این نفران دو ہی افتو درو دس نوٹ ناو یو کن درو ایٹ ان یور نوٹس آفٹر کلاس بٹ یس دو ڈائیگرام آف دس ایس امپورٹنٹ سو یو کن درو ایٹ فر پریکٹس وین ایور یو فائن ٹائم right okay uh yeah so this is the diagram of a nephron uh what are nephrons if you would ask is basically like we have uh, you know for nervous system we have neurons right similarly the basic units in the kidneys or the basic uh, structural and functional units of kidneys are called nephrons there are specialized type of cells whose main task would be to filter out waste products from blood right okay so yeah this is a nephron and in a kidney in generally in one kidney there are millions of them and we have two kidneys so you can imagine there are uh, many million nephrons in your kidneys right and uh, we need them because each of them is going to be able to filter out only a small amount of volume of uh, blood and then create urine right then all from all these nephrons all the waste products is collected as urine and passed on to the ureter right so this is the basic things you need to know okay uh, for this diagram uh, if you want to know what all you need to remember to label actually everything is important but usually for labeling they might ask you one among these they might ask you to label glomerulus Bowman's capsule, loop of Henle, uh, PCT and DCT, collecting duct also, right? So even when you're making your diagram, make sure all these points are definitely there and you know where which point is, right? PCT, DCT is a little confusing. So make sure you know where it is, right? Uh, because the, uh, what, what should I say? Uh, you don't have it in detail, like what exactly happens in PCT, or what exactly happens in the loop of Henle, all that is not there, which is why this diagram becomes important. Then knowing where it is becomes important, right? What is this red thing? Is red thing is nothing but a blood vessel, okay? The blood vessel, basically the renal artery and the renal vein. Anything to do with the kidneys is called renal. Like anything to do with the lungs is called pulmonary, right? These are all uh, anatomic, anatomy keywords. I won't say bio keywords. Human anatomy keywords, which you learn slowly. Like anything to do with the word cranial has to do with the brain. Right? These are all small keywords. Ocular will have to do with the eye. Okay? Ear is called what? I can't remember now. Auditory. Auditory. Auditory will have to do with the ear. Okay? So these are all just some keywords for human anatomy, which, you know, with, yeah, if you are going to take up uh bio or you know medicine in the future you might learn all these words and you might also get a hang of it that okay cranial if i say cranial anytime something to do with the brain renal has to do with the uh, kidneys okay so the artery which comes to the kidney so that's how they've named the arteries otherwise it is very difficult no if you sit and name each and every artery in the body you will go crazy So what they did is wherever the major areas or major organs, etc., uh, if they see an artery entering, exiting there, they have given it the name. So the artery entering, exiting lungs is pulmonary. Similarly, the artery entering uh, the kidney would be the renal artery, and the exiting one would be the renal vein. Okay, so the things they have drawn in red here is basically the renal artery. which is then forming the capillary and then again, you know, condensing and forming the vein back again. Right. So that is it. Yeah. And then what is dialysis? So sometimes in uh, some people, okay, let me see. Yeah. Right. Sometimes what happens, no? In uh, either there could be some uh, genetic condition or there could be malfunctioning of the kidneys. So when your kidneys stop working, how will you get rid of waste right so we have come up with something which is called dialysis this is also called as artificial kidney 
okay so over the years we have spent you know we've spent time we've spent our uh, or uh, you know time analyzing and understanding the function of each and every nephron so we've spent time in understanding how the filtration happens at this level you know what exactly is getting filtered how exactly are we taking back stuff which is useful for us and then forming urine right so that entire thing once we got a hang of it we replicated it outside and we created a box like structure which does the same thing okay so now what they do in people no in people who have uh, kidney trouble or who are not able to uh, you know whose kidneys are not functioning properly so that filtration occurs right so for them there is this machine created where they will attach one tube to your arm okay so one artery will be the one which is draining all the blood to this machine this machine has lot of tubes like this okay they try to mimic the nephron here and the blood will pass through all these tubes and it will get filtered in that process then again there they have one okay let me just make it with uh, another color they have another tube and they will be putting it back into your vein got it like that it happens so the entire filtration process is happening outside your body and this entire process of the blood being you know taken out filtered and then put back in your body that full thing com combined is called dialysis this is a dialysis machine okay this is called a dialysis machine but the complete process is what is called dialysis again if you are interested if you want to know how exactly it happens you can watch that video it's a short one i think 2 or 3 minute one nicely given so once you have understood the processing of kidney then watch that right okay yeah and uh, this is a time consuming process why because see your entire the uh, you know i would say the beauty of this machine or the beauty of uh, creating something like this is that entire volume of blood in your body okay the entire liters 5 to 6 liters of blood which is there in your body is slowly passed through this machine okay and is filtered so every ounce of your blood is filtered and sent back of course it is done slowly it's not like all 5 liters are sent at once you will be dead otherwise so it is done slowly but the entire volume of blood is filtered properly and sent back so that's why this is a really beautiful thing we've come up with isn't it so medical uh, you know uh, inventions are always just uh, mind blowing <laughs> right all inventions are but i find medical ones a little bit more mind blowing okay right yes. yes and these are the four points or the four functions you need to know okay copy them as it is okay if you want the flow this is what happens so renal artery will reach the glomerulus and at the glomerulus the glomerular filtration occurs okay then next step will be tubular reabsorption which will happen at the pct dct area then collecting ducts and then finally once everything is collected once uh, you know whatever is useful to us is taken back in uh, you be passed it will be uh, you know condensed as urine and passed on to the ureter bladder for storing etc right yes so these points which are given in bold no they become your keywords okay and these whatever information i have written uh, next to it you can write in your own words chalega but make sure you are writing these as it is these are important keywords okay so you must know what is glomerular filtration what is tubular reabsorption right
yeah so in that video link which i have sent in the group right uh, they have explained these four processes step wise right i instead of me explaining i uh, preferred that video is because they have made animations for everything so they have made an animation right at the you know glomerular level and they are telling you how filtration happens there then why is reabsorption required that also they made an animation and explain that's why i preferred using that instead of me drawing the weird diagrams and explaining it to you. right but see again the basic thing which happens no if if you've got the hang of the chapter till now you will realize that 90% of whatever is happening is happening via diffusion only everywhere or a change in concentration or things like that right so similar kind of process happens here also when i talk about filtration because of the pressure those small molecules they get out from the uh, blood vessels and get into the nephron right this step is only done because some amount of useful substances also come into the nephron which you know you don't want it to uh, get out of your body as waste you want it back so you take it back reabsorption is just taking it back right reabsorbing it okay when i say redo you are doing it again right you are basically that so you are taking it back in something like that right the next two things are self explanatory the only the first two points you'll find little confusing which the video will help you a lot in getting it you know uh, clear crystal clear right okay let me know if you've taken down all the four points Done, done. No, oh, I'm five minutes. Okay. Done. Okay. Right. So this is actually the last slide of our PPT and the last part of our chapter. So yes, if you are done, then I just have a couple of things to note or to tell you. Then we can end the session also. Right. So yeah, uh, once our chapter is done, yeah, please uh, compile your notes and send it. I'll send the PPT on the group today itself. Okay, the video for this is already there. I'll I'll uh, resend it and highlight it. That batch two also has to watch it. Okay, then I'll send the PPT also. Your task will be to first send the notes, uh, whatever you made in today's class, and then over the course of your summer vacation, go through everything in detail. okay go through your chapter note once go through the ppt or your notes either of it once theek hai slowly over the summer vacation don't sit one day and you know just read everything slowly go through it you will definitely get a lot of questions when you try to read it on your own right so compile all those questions and keep those ready so that when we do a revision session once we uh, you know resume classes we can get all those addressed and clear all your doubts okay so do all those things right and of course there are a lot of videos in the ppt so whenever you find time throughout your vacation make sure you are watching those also some are you know some are just uh, to get you uh, interested in the chapter itself i have not added uh, some big big videos it's all related to the chapter only and some are of course to get a better understanding of the 
things we've read and we've learned so watch them when you get time just like uh, four or five minute videos they will be not uh, long half an hour half an hour videos nahi so when you get time do watch them right yeah so after this i'll be seeing you probably once uh, uh, vacation ends right we don't have a bio class schedule after this immediately so yeah have a nice vacation enjoy your time see you all later then yes. thank you ma'am okay yeah so if you've copied the notes i mean you've copied the points you can leave ha huh? we are done for the day in just a minute yeah yeah i'll wait thank you ma'am have a great day okay you too bye Uh, is there going to be a biology revision class this Saturday? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. There is bio on Saturday. I'm not sure what is it Saturday. Can just ask class. No, because uh, there was never there was never bio so far. So I thought it would be. Uh, yeah, actually. Um, okay. Yeah, I'll check with Lassia, ma'am. If it is going to be there, I'll just check with her. Okay. Uh, yeah, but I just won't be available because I'm going out. So I won't oh. be able to come. Is it? Is it? Oh. Yeah. ठीक है ठीक है ठीक है I'll uh, whatever class is there I think you'll be informed right so don't worry if even if there is a bio session we'll just do some basic practice kind of things so I'll inform you whatever we do don't worry. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Dakshini, are you saying something? I am not able to hear you. I think there is some audio issue at your end. You can send it in the chat box. Thank you, ma'am. Bye, ma'am. Bye. Oh, you are saying bye. Okay. Bye. See you.